Oh, hey, guess what, Internet? Y'all were looking for a jetpack. You don't need to look no more. I won. Game over. Search completed. Here it is. Getting the jetpack in Grand Theft Auto V is a fairly arduous task. It involves a lot of time-consuming activities inside the game, which are fairly hard to do and have to be done to completion in ridiculous areas. And to get this kickstarted, we're going to start playing as Trevor at the end of the game, having beaten it recently. The first thing you're going to want to do to get this Easter egg unlocked is you're going to want to get a fast car and head over towards the prison. Just something fast so you don't take a lot of time getting there. I personally recommend the Adder. It's pretty fast, reliable, and if you got souped up like I did with Michael, it's just a matter of stealing it as Trevor, because I'm not playing as Michael to get this jetpack. Why Why would I? Who would do that? No, that's not, not an option. When you get to the prison, just circle around up to this area. Again, uh, around a max speed, and you're going to want to surf over to the crest of the hill and into the prison walls if only the governor had been that smart but no that piece of shit Herschel had to fucking smile and then get his fucking head taken off I like where this is headed <laughs> it didn't make the cut <laughs> oh those never get old the main key component for unlocking this Easter egg and the jetpack for completion is you have to get inside the prison and you have to stay on foot for 48 minutes in real life, basically a whole day in Grand Theft Auto 5. And doing so can be quite the task because basically you accrue so many stars in that period of time, you're going to have cops swarming you left and right. The uh, snipers at the top of the building will definitely take fire at you. It only takes like two bullets for them to kill you if they don't get a headshot on the first one. A viable tactic I use, because Trevor's invincible if you go into his superpower mode, is heading towards one of the guard towers. You can just enter the basement part of it and stay around where the door is because you're not going to want guards coming up in there. The guard on top of the tower and the roof actually can't enter inside of the tower because he's an idiot. So by staying inside the bottom area by the stairwell and sort of taking cover behind this pillar, you can actually get a good line of sight for the door. That's not to say people won't try to kill you. Oh no, yes, you will be swarmed for the full 48 minutes. Staying alive is more of a task of marksmanship, endurance, and patience. It all comes down to how quickly you're able to kill the cops when they come in and keep that door clear. So you're going to need a pretty powerful weapon. I recommend a light machine gun or the minigun. Even even the shotguns well, as long as you get that one hit kill on the first shot. Because the cops they'll be sending in won't be shooting you with pistols. They'll be shooting you with submachine guns, assault rifles, and worst of all, a shotgun. A single shotgun blast from where the door range is, is insta-kill. And unfortunately, if you leave this area and go up to the top of the guard tower, you're just as vulnerable because guards can actually swarm inside the building, inside the tower, and race up top to kill you. It's basically a death trap. A viable tactic I found that's excessively boring, once you've piled up a sufficient amount of bodies, you can take one of your C4 sticky bombs, throw it at the bodies that are all by the door, and explode it. And doing so should cause some collateral damage to vehicles parked nearby. Additionally, and more importantly, it'll start the mass wall of flesh you put in front of your door on fire. And doing so will cause like this weird ass chain reaction because the bodies will keep burning. It'll burn everybody there. And then because you have a wanted rating and the guards in this are fairly aggressive, this of course leads to insta-kills for every police officer that runs into the fire, which is all of them. So you can just do that and wait like 48 minutes or whenever the fire dissipates because sometimes they won't set each other on fire, which is stupid when that happens. And then you get one of those shotgun guards to come in who just kills you and you have to redo the whole thing. Because it's 48 minutes in a single instance, this can be very aggravating for most people. But um, if you do this tactic... I think you'll be okay. Once the fire pile's set up, it, you're pretty golden for the most part. It's just a waiting game. 
a very boring waiting game where anyone could kill you. So once you've survived the prison part of The Walking Dead... No, wait, what? Okay, Grand Theft Auto V. We need you back, Rick. You're going to want to head over to a place that has the Little Bird helicopter. I think it's called a buzzard in this game. I'm going to call it that from now on. So once you found a buzzard or spawned one, you want to fly up to the IAA building. You might remember this building from the initial E3 gameplay trailer of Grand Theft Auto V. It's also featured in one of the first missions where you get to play as all three characters, which is pretty awesome. So, you want to fly up to this IAA building and align yourself westerly or whatever direction is on the screen. <clears throat> you want to gently hover down a bit by releasing the acceleration trigger, and as such your helicopters start floating down slowly. Orient yourself so you're facing the building. You'll notice that there's some glass panes you can actually see through. Just guesstimate where it is in relation to where it was in the mission. What you want to do is open fire with your cannons, your machine gun cannons, and you'll be shooting out the glass. And you shoot up all the glass in that area, and then you want to fly up way far away from it. Not far, far away, but like high up. So you can still see it, because if you leave that area, the glass spawns, and you're all like, "Fuck, I'm gonna die!" Uh, once you're still within sight of the building and sufficiently far away, you want to jump out, not committing suicide, and you want to pull out your parachute when you're, um, when you're when you can see like the top of the IA building. Sort of aim yourself by holding the left bumper and the right bumper. You'll do a control glide, and you want to control glide right into where you were literally just shooting. And you'll fly through the glass, losing almost all your health. Don't fuck around here. You're inside the IAA building, bitch. Now, inside the IAA building, and if you've done the 48-minute walk around inside the prison correctly, at the end of the corridor, you keep going down the hall, and you'll see the jetpack actually spawns here. The real one is, in fact, inside the IAA building. If you met the prerequisites. What you want to do now is walk up to it and press right on the D-pad. And you're like, what? When I press the D-pad, it disappears and says it will be located at 48 Woodstone. What the fuck does that mean? Well, after a while, we were pretty depressed because, you know, you're in the IA building. You, got, you saw the jetpack. You just can't use it. And when you press the button to use it... It goes to 48 Woodstone. What the fuck is a 48 Woodstone? I know you're pretty miffed about not being able to use the jetpack in the IAA building, but it's the IAA building. There's really nothing else in here. So, you want to kill yourself in a creative way. Do whatever it takes. Get outside of the fucking IAA building. We're done with this shit. Well, luckily me and my team, it took a while. We finally found out where 48 Woodstone is located. And it's actually located near Franklin's house. His new house. Spoilers in the campaign. He gets a new house. A mansion. Pretty awesome. Unfortunately, we can't go in it because we're Trevor. Not that I'd ever play as Franklin. I'm not a racist. You want to drive up to where 48 Woodstone is. And the jetpack will always spot at 48 Woodstone, by the way, from now on. And you'll note when you approach 48 Woodstone, the uh, garage door actually opens, which is a little creepy. I'm approaching it in my Kona Stig. <laughs> you guys might not have seen 48 Woodstone before, but when you drive up to it, the garage opens and the jetpack's inside of it. It's one of these random houses with a garage. The jetpack will be spinning around as it used to do in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. You walk up to it, press right on the D-pad. Your screen will go black for a sec. The loading icon will come up, and then you can actually use it. And here we are floating down with it. You get high enough, you can fall. You can sort of land on your dick. You put Skyfall cheat on. Oh my god, you're flying through the sky. It's subsonic flight. It's amazing. I love this thing. It's the greatest thing ever. I'm going Mach 3, bitch, in my jetpack. Uh, what? Once you've unlocked the jetpack in single player, when you go into online mode, you'll actually be able to buy it inside the game. What you want to do is bring up your cell phone, go to the internet option, select Warstock Cash and Carry, and at the very bottom of the page, you'll be able to purchase the jetpack. It's, look at the price tag, $90 million. Fuck. Uh, hashtag worth it. But the jetpack's pretty awesome. You guys are going to love it when you use it. A lot of fun.
best thing in Grand Theft Auto Five ever, aside from the strip club, which is Spank Bank. What up? I gotta give a massive shout out now to Shore Wars, aka Anthony Rogers. If it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be gameplay commentaries on YouTube. He got a lot of people's channels started up and got them into commentating. He helped me jumpstart my YouTube career, I guess, if you can call it that. And most importantly, he helped me find out this jetpack. He actually found out some of the steps in acquiring it and told them to me over Twitter. <laughs> so uh, go ahead, subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's going to be putting more gameplay videos up. And, and follow him on Twitter while you're at it. He's a pretty good dude. And thanks for the opportunities, Anthony. And thanks for the help with this video. Now for a little more shameless of a plug. I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers. So, with that in mind, you should probably subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends and even your enemies. Don't forget, YouTube.com slash McCallahan Industries. Best Easter eggs on YouTube, by far. Follow me on Twitter, at TheJimothy. Next time we find a new Wonder Weapon, Jimothy out. <laughs>